Another great show on tap for today's Golden State Warriors today. I'm Chase Senior. Thank you so much for being here with us. Before we take a look at the latest news around Chris Paul and the fact that he wants to start reportedly for the Warriors this year, you take a look at some of our recent milestones and our accomplishments here on the channel. It wouldn't be possible without all of your support, so thank you so much. This month, we were able to surpass 1 million views for the second consecutive summer. We just surpassed 59,000 subscribers. Coming up next, we're a little less than 1,000 people away from 60,000 subscribers. There are not many Warriors YouTube channels out there that have as many subscribers and as many views as us. We're certainly blessed to be able to do what we do. And if you're in the market for year-round near-daily Warriors coverage, hit that sub button and join the party. Let's begin here and talk about this conversation with Chris Paul that I find to be very, very fascinating. What will Chris Paul's role be with the Warriors this upcoming season? And Steph Curry also did say, after the acquisition of Chris Paul, I like the construction of this roster. He said that he's a fan of this Chris Paul trade. And let's try to make sense of what Steph Curry is talking about with those comments here. The pluses of having Chris Paul on this team, they're plentiful, but there are also downsides, and we'll uncover and unpack the pluses and the minuses. Chris Paul is a veteran playmaker who's going to be able to help Steph Curry, and he's going to be able to take some pressure off of Steph Curry at 35 years old, whose usage rate has been very, very high the last few years. And last year, the Warriors struggled to have playmakers outside of Steph. You need to take the pressure off of him and the mileage off of him to keep him fresh for the NBA playoffs. Because I thought as that series wore on against the Los Angeles Lakers, he started to get tired, he lost his legs, and he wasn't able to hit some of those shots that he hit in that Sacramento series. That went the distance in seven games, and that's why Curry kind of wore down a little bit. CP3 is going to be able to help him as a floor general, a distributor, an initiator, run the offense, and Steph Curry also going to be able to play off ball alongside CP3 when they share the floor together. I think with CP3 as well, because he's such a smart basketball player and he understands tempo, he understands pace, he's not going to take bad shots like Jordan Poole did at times, which made Steve Kerr want to rip his hair out, especially early in the shot clock when they were ill-advised, low-efficient shots. He's also not going to turn the basketball over as many times as Jordan Poole. And he's a better player in terms of setting up the offense as compared to Poole. CP3, while he might want to start, I think he's better slotted playing and running with that second unit. So this is a very good point guard who's going to be able to run that second unit and set his teammates up for success. I think there's a plus of him playing alongside Steph for the reasons that I talked about a little bit earlier of just conserving Curry a little bit as he ages a bit. And I think that CP3 is going to be able to unlock Jonathan Kaminga, the veteran leader that he might need, the voice in his head that he might need, but a veteran who knows the game of basketball, the ins and outs, the intricacies of it, the wrinkles of the game, that might allow Jonathan Kaminga to just see the game from a different perspective and learn the game a little bit differently from a guy like CP3. And then you talk about the pick and roll, the pick and pop, and some of the actions that they can run together that could open up some opportunities for Kaminga, who last year did play well when the Warriors had a traditional point guard on the floor. The downsides of having Chris Paul on this squad. He does not help what is already a pretty big issue even after the signing of Dario Saric, and that is a lack of size. He is 38 years old and very expensive, although him being on that expiring deal helps out the Warriors because they have that future financial flexibility because they got rid of that Jordan Poole contract. He's been injured a lot in the playoffs, so if he has a good regular season and you reap the benefits of having him on the team, but then he gets injured, then you're back where you were last year where you're asking Steph Curry to do a whole hell of a lot. And then CP3, he's been a good defender, guarding point guards throughout his career, but at this point, I would not say that he's elite by any means on that end. Now, let's get to the main topic at hand here. Should CP3 start? This report coming from Sam Amick of The Athletic, he said, Chris Paul is among the smartest, most deliberate, and occasionally calculating players the game has ever seen, and that reality should always be considered when analyzing his words and deeds. So when he pushed back 
against the idea that he would come off the bench for the Warriors this year during his introductory news conference in Vegas on Sunday, it's safe to assume that he knew precisely what he was doing. Regardless of what comes next, it's quite clear that Paul is holding out some hope that there's a way for him to start. And no, people, not in replacement of Steph Curry and or Clay Thompson, but with them in a small lineup. So with that, let's tee up today's poll question. Be real with us. This will be our pinned comment. So scroll on down, get those votes in. We want to hear from Dub Nation here. Should Chris Paul start for the Warriors? S for start, B for bench. We'll take a look at some lineups here in just a moment. Then you look at this tweet from Anthony Slater. There's been no discussion, and this came back on July 9th, so a few days ago, between Chris Paul and Steve Kerr about Paul coming, uh, Paul coming off the bench. It'll be a conversation when camp starts, Chris Paul said. Me and Steve have talked, but that ain't something where it's, what's up, man? You start me, or am I coming in off the bench? And I could totally see where Chris Paul is coming from. So if CP3 were to start, there's a couple of different lineups that I think the Warriors could trot out there, and they could go small, or they could remain big. So one starting five with CP3 allows the Warriors to still have some size with Kevon Looney and Draymond Green, and then he gets his dream of playing with Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. If the Warriors do want to go small, and they want to put Draymond Green at that five spot, here is option number two, where CP3 and Steph Curry kind of give you that double point guard combination. You have Klay Thompson and Andrew Wiggins as your guard and small forward on that wing, and then Draymond Green has to play the five. This would totally be predicated on the lineup that you are facing. Because if you're playing a Sixers team with Joel Embiid, a Nuggets team with Nikola Jokic, even the Lakers with LeBron and AD, you cannot afford to go small against that team because they will exploit and take advantage of that lack of size. Now the issue, the issue with Chris Paul starting for the Golden State Warriors, it doesn't help their biggest issue which is size deficiency. Yes, they brought back Draymond Green. They drafted Trace Jackson Davis. They signed Dario Saric in a move that I had advocated for for a really long time, but the Warriors still don't have any players on this team that are above 6'9", 6'10". And in the Western Conference, what's the biggest foe that they have to get over? It's the Denver Nuggets with Nikola Jokic. It's also the Los Angeles Lakers with Anthony Davis, and they were able to really add some size and bulk to that team throughout free agency. So while CP3 certainly has earned the right to start, he's a future Hall of Famer, still really gifted, still putting up great numbers, starting him with this team as constituted doesn't make a lot of sense because I don't know if Steve Kerr is willing to go small on numerous occasions, knowing that's their biggest weakness. Short. Sure. We provide you with year-round coverage here on Gold State Warriors today, and that's why you subscribe. We are less than 1,000 people away from 60,000 subscribers. Reaching all these milestones has been an absolute blast. Hosting this program has been absolutely awesome. Hit that sub button, lock us in, and thanks for watching as always.